Uh, you know, yesterday I picked up this cool little camera. Now this is a uh, Kodak Disc 4000. This camera was actually manufactured in the early 80s. And uh, what's interesting about it is that it opens like that. It was made to be very simple to use. It took this uh, little cartridge of disc film, uh, which uh, gave you 15 exposures on a round piece of film that fit here into this cartridge. And so you'd, you'd send this cartridge in to have it developed and you'd get back these this round disc of negatives, which is uh, really unusual, but uh, it made things easy for people who uh, just wanted to be able to slip that disc in, close it up, and start shooting. It's a range finder, press that button. Another interesting thing about this camera is I don't think this particular model allowed you to replace the batteries. But anyway, I thought that was cool. I like collecting these old cameras even if I can't actually use them. But that got me to thinking about film formats. Now that's an, that's an outmoded one. Nobody uses that anymore, as far as I know. I, I, I don't see how you could, uh, because I don't know if there's any labs, if there are any labs that would develop it, even though it is a C41 process. Uh, I guess you could do it at home if you could find uh, discs of film still available somewhere. That got me to thinking about the different film formats that are still available, the ones that have stood the test of time. And I know a lot of people uh, right now who, who used to shoot film and then got into digital, a lot of them are getting back into film photography. I'm one of those people. I, I, don't, I never really left film photography, but I, I got really heavy into digital. So now I shoot film and digital. But there are a lot of people out there, uh, especially younger photographers who've never shot film, who are now just starting to get into it. Uh, maybe this video is more for them. So if you're really familiar with uh, different film cameras and film formats, then the rest of this video is probably not going to be that interesting to you. But if you're new to film photography or you're trying to get back into it and you uh, really don't know where to start, uh, this is just a very general primer as far as film formats and different film cameras go. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first one that is probably the most popular still to this day is 35 millimeter uh, film. You can still find 35 millimeter SLRs almost everywhere. This is the one I showed you the other day. If you go back a video or two, you'll see me talking about this one. This is a Nikon FE. I started off with a Minolta XG7 when I was a kid. That was back in the late 70s. Uh, but I have a, a big collection of film cameras here that work. Now that was an SLR, which means, you know, it's a single lens reflex. Uh, you, you, the viewfinder let you see through the lens like uh, a lot of DSLRs do these days. This is a range finder. These are also popular. You look through the viewfinder here. You frame up the picture through this optical lens here, but the actual picture taking lens is this one. Uh, so again, this another one where the film goes in this compartment right here winds this way and exposes the film right here. 35 millimeter film typically comes in little canisters like this. So as you take pictures, more of the film comes out. Essentially gets loaded into the camera like this. It goes around that winder, uh, close the door and advance the film. Now even a lot of people who don't do a lot of film photography are probably familiar with that format. Some other 35 millimeters that are still very popular, a lot of people just pick these up on eBay or go to camera stores that sell older cameras. So you have the Canons, like the Canon AE-1 program, that's a really popular one. I saw somebody who's probably about the age of 16, 17 using one of those the other day. Um, and uh, let's see, there's the Nikons, there are, there's the uh, Olympus OM-10, there's a Pentax K-1000, a lot of classics, uh, and uh, the Yashica Electros, uh, different models and varieties of that camera. So there are a lot to choose from as far as 35 millimeter cameras go. All right, so now we get into medium format film, and medium format film is larger than the 35 millimeter film. So consequently, you're gonna get bigger negatives and uh, theoretically better resolution. I'll show you the difference in negative size. I mean, if you're not that familiar with film, uh, you might think that, okay, you know how like digital cameras have uh, the ones with the bigger uh, full frame sensors give you better resolution because you've got more like, you've got more pixels to work with in a larger digital sensor than you would in a smaller. 
color one. Uh, something like that with negative. Here are, um, here's a roll of uh, black and white negative film. You can see that the negatives are about this size, right? Which corresponds with the camera. Medium format film is larger so you can get larger negatives. So you can see the difference in negative size. So medium format negatives are just bigger. So for example, if you want to make an 11 by 14 print off of one of these smaller 35 millimeter negatives, uh, you're going to get a certain image quality. If you want to make one off of this, it, it won't have to be enlarged quite as much. And so, uh, like I said, theoretically, you're going to get uh, just better resolution in a final print. So lots of times when you buy a pack of this uh, medium format, it'll come like this. And instead of uh, little plastic canisters like you'll get with 35 millimeter, uh, come wrapped in these little packages. While things like this, uh, this cartridge was just made it foolproof basically to to load up a camera, kind of in the similar way that Instamatics, you know, in that 110 film, you know, it was just like a little cartridge. You just, just popped it into a camera and you started taking pictures. 35 millimeter was a little bit harder to do because you had to wrap it around the sprockets and you had to wind it a couple of times and just make sure you got it right. Medium format might even take a little more getting used to. Uh, it took me a while to get used to loading uh, medium format cameras up. Now, because of how medium format cameras work and because, you know, the size of this film so big, uh, you're not really limited by the film itself as far as how big your uh, eventual negatives are going to be. Uh, it's just a roll of film. So if you've got a camera that makes frames about this size, uh, then you're going to get negatives this size and you're going to have these little spacers in between just by the nature of the way that the camera winds the film. But uh, depending on the camera, uh, medium format cameras can give you uh, anything from six by nine millimeter negatives, which is really big. I think uh, I would get negatives that size with a with an old brownie. What was it called? A brownie bullseye. So, okay, so on the 120 film, you've got different cameras that'll give you different uh, negative sizes, like the Holga and the Hasselblad, and anything shooting square is gonna give you a six by six um, square negative. You've got the Mamiya medium format cameras that will give you uh, different sizes. So like, um, let's say the Mamiya 645 will give you uh, negatives about this size. And the Mamiya 6x7 cameras, the Mamiya RB67 and RZ67 will give you larger negatives. So this was shot with an RZ67. Also really popular with a lot of people are the twin lens reflex cameras, which I believe for the most part will give you the square format, the 6x6. All right, so we've covered 35 millimeter and medium format film and cameras. What we haven't talked about is the, uh, the instant uh, film, which is uh, really gaining in popularity. Now, Polaroid just stopped making their famous Polaroid uh, instant film because I guess it wasn't profitable anymore. But another company came in called Impossible. The Impossible Project came in and uh, uh, started making uh, uh, instant film for the old Polaroid cameras. Fast forward today, and they're they're now rebranded as Polaroid Originals. Uh, and that makes sense because people were still referring to the impossible instant film as Polaroid. Uh, I even have a box here labeled Polaroid that's uh, uh, mostly full of impossible film and Fuji instant film. So as far as instant goes, you have these that were shot with uh, an old Polaroid camera, the SX-70. All right, and the people who make this film uh, for use with the old Polaroid cameras, they make a, a, a variety of these films. They make uh, color, black and white, and different varieties of those. Uh, they're making their own, they're, they're selling their own cameras too that will use this film. Uh, so you should check that out. I will have a link to all of the stuff that I'm talking about down in the description below. Um, Fuji Instax also makes a great instant film. Uh, and that's for use with their Instax cameras. Uh, just as a side note, there is another type of instant film that is no longer 
being made, but it's still available, and that is the Fuji Pack Film. Now that is some really good film. There are uh, color and black and white varieties of that. I was able to uh, make these instant pictures with uh, with my Mamiya RZ67, as a matter of fact, and that is uh, because the RZ cameras have detachable backs on them, so you can put different types of film backs on them, and one of those was a specialty back called a Polaroid back. You were able to load uh, that this type of film in those Polaroid backs, and it's a peel apart film, which means that the film actually came out uh, looking like this. And what's interesting is that you had, you know, you have an actual negative left behind. There's an actual negative in there, and there's chemicals in here that develop the negative onto the positive print. So, okay, there you go 35 millimeter, medium format, and instant film and their associated cameras. I'll have more information, like I said, down in the links below. Uh, if you have any tips on film photography that you'd like to share with someone who wants to get into it, uh, leave those tips in the comments below. If you have any questions about this stuff that I can answer or that maybe uh, somebody else can answer in the comment section, uh, go ahead and leave those questions down there. Hey, as always, thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, I really enjoy talking about this stuff with you. And if you got anything out of it, uh, just let me know by clicking that like button. Tell me that you like this video. Uh, if you haven't already, go ahead and click subscribe. We talk about lots of stuff here, not just film, lots of digital, lots of lighting, lots of uh, working with models and stuff like that, lots of creativity topics. <laughs> so yeah, we talk about lots of stuff. Hey, again, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you next time.